please remember to check out our other videos and click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you get notifications each time we upload another video. Today we're working on this 2018 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf that's coming to us suffering from a greatly reduced range. It is a taxi and as you can see here has covered just shy of 120,000 miles. It has been charged approximately four times a day over its lifetime, so it's definitely not a standard use case. But more importantly for us is the 120 millivolt spread that we're seeing and the fact one module that consists of four cells is failing to balance. This has a huge effect on range as it stops the pack accessing its full capacity. We carried out a diagnostic check and as seen, no fault stored in any of the control modules. So I disconnected the 12 volt battery Matt pulled the MSD and we got the leaf up in the air. We did our normal dance for removing the under trays and that allowed us to remove the traction and heater high voltage connectors and then the LV harness. 10 minutes later the battery is coming out. Looking underneath and after 120,000 miles this is in ace condition. We then removed all the securing bolts for the lid and had to cut through the seal as these later packs were bonded with a wet seal opposed to a dry seal on earlier variants. Now the lid's off, we were working at high voltages, so we have all the relevant signage and cordons in place. We also take a few minutes to inspect the pack for obvious signs of failure, and we soon spot an issue. The look on Matt's face says it all. It seems that the whole rear module stack has expanded and is under tension, although the impact at first glance seems to be towards the end of the stack and gets gradually worse as it reaches a BMS. The reason for this is, this rear stack gets the hottest, combined with constant rapid charging and heating and the lack of thermal management, it's going to suffer with this in this usage case. For normal mileages however, this shouldn't be an issue. It's also key to remember, we're 120,000 miles in, this car has had a very hard life and these modules, although defective, are still fully operational, with the exception of the faulty one that is. Also, the customer didn't want these changing so they're going back in. We removed and started to strip the stack that our diagnostic equipment appointed us towards. But here's a top tip, don't always trust your equipment. Matt carried out 20 minutes of diagnostic work, twice to be sure, only to find our faulty module wasn't where we'd first thought. So after some further diagnosis, we soon realized it was located in the rear stack, which considering the issues we found, made sense. We stripped and removed it with the use of an engine crane for safety. You really don't want to be dropping one of these. You can see Matt in the background removing the buzz bars and LV harnesses. Whilst doing all this, we had the replacement module on charge and remembering there are four cells in each module, it's not a quick process. This actually added a good three to four hours to the job and we carried out another leaf battery swap whilst we waited. Finally, when we were able to build the rear stack back up, it wasn't easy and we actually had to use a ratchet strap to compress the modules enough to allow us to bolt it back together, but we managed it. Once refitted, less than 30 minutes later, the pack was rebuilt and ready to be tested. Despite its issues, it's a very easy battery to work on in most cases. We then refitted the pack and powered it up to check everything was working correctly. And we're pleased to say it was, despite the ongoing issues with the rear modules. Okay folks, what we've just done is um, we've just popped the lid on with no bolts in because you have to, it's got a wet seal. So uh, we've popped it back in the car with five or six bolts on uh, and Matt's just jumped in and done a leaf spike to check that we've lost most of that imbalance which we have. We've gone from I think 120 millivolts to uh, down to 40-ish. So with a few balance charges that should come up and it should all be good. Um, and now we're just going to take it out, we're going to reseal the lid and then bolt it back in and we're going to pop it on charge for an hour and hopefully that will uh, start to do the, the balancing job. So fingers crossed, that's fixed and uh, good to go. We then removed the battery, applied the correct bonding agent, refitted the lid and torqued and popped the pack back in. We refitted the tricky under trays, Matt popped the MSD back in and I reconnected the 12 volt battery. And that's it going out folks, that's been a long day's work. Um, bit caught out by the fact that we had to wait probably the best part of four hours for the um, for the module to balance but yeah it's done we're going to just pop it on the, um, the charger outside and fingers crossed it will charge up nicely and uh, the guy can take it home
Okay folks, so there you go, you can just see it on charge there. It's at about 50 something percent state of charge at the moment, so uh, we can leave it on for 10 minutes and just get him as much in as we can, explain to him what he needs to do and, and that's it, should be good to go. All done. Yeah, we could have done without the weight to charge the cell, but otherwise we were quite confident in our repair. We, we found the, the dead cell yeah. um, and we've replaced it. We've learned a lot along the way yeah. and um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with a completed repair. We'll watch it charge and uh, once it's charged for a little bit, the guy can get on his way. Um, but you reckon about four hours on that job for balancing that module? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think so. so uh, There's the faulty module over there. Which, um, which we'll di dissect it. Yeah, which we're going to take apart. But, um, we're going to take it apart sometime and find out what's actually yeah. happened in there. Yeah. But, yeah, job well done. Nice one, Matt. Obviously, we want to keep tabs on the leaf repair. And after a couple of balance charges, the millivolt spread had reduced to 39 millivolts and then 28 millivolts afterwards. So, we're very pleased with the results.